Call the meeting to order at 6.30. We are looking for additions to the agenda. Um, we do have some. I see at least three on the select board memo. Do you have any additions, Amy? Um, and maybe we could, for the sake of the record, say what those additions are. Well, first I wanted to say, do you have any more? I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. So. I don't have any more. Okay, the three items we have, discussion on potential change of Tacon Drive to Tacon, oh, it's leaving, <laughs> okay, leaving out the hyphen, is it a hyphen? Yeah. Right. Between the two words, Tacon to Tacon. Okay, <laughs> very good. This is a big, big item. And discussion on potential change of delinquent tax collector and confirmation of agreement for FY 2022 Sullivan Towers audit. So we have three things that we'll put under other business or somewhere in there. If there's a gap in the, if we have some time before that, we'll squeeze those things in. Um, so anyway, review of minutes, May 2nd. And I have one. And has everyone read these? I have read them. You have read them? Yes, and I enjoyed them thoroughly. <laughs> I would I would move to approve them as written unless anybody else thinks that something should be adjusted. I think they're great. Yes. I'll and John, and John, and nice to see you, John. Hmm? You've got COVID, we hear? Yeah, I'm on, uh, yeah, look at me. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too, not, not too bad. I, I'm not sure I have it now or not. I don't really have any symptoms, but I haven't tested this week, so. Mm. Okay. Well, good to see you. Um, okay. okay, so we're looking favorably on the minutes. Um, I think we should try to pass them. We have I moved motion. to pass the minutes. I think I already did that. Oh, you did? Okay. Did. Who, who made the seconds? I did. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The minutes for May 2nd are passed. And those are all the minutes we have to do tonight. The next thing on the agenda is public comment. Public. Public. I don't see any public commenting. Um, yes. Oh, we do have public. <laughs> <laughs> he's shaking his head no. I think he's part of the planning commission discussion. This is Scott Hess. Yes, he's shaking his head. Um, so let's move to discussion of the Recreation Board on social media policy. Do we have somebody here from the Recreation Board? You do, yes. Bob Fitch. Bob Fitch. Oh, Come you're Bob Fitch? Okay. Yep. Nice to meet you. Hey, Baron. Yeah, my name's Seth. Hi, John. And we have Carl here. I'm Carl. Carl Itnair. And we have two members that are zooming in. John Jewett and Amy Willis. Okay. So uh, I see we have a social media rules and guidelines. And you've got the floor. Mr. Fitch. All right. Um, basically, we as a rec board are willing to or wishing to set up a Facebook page that the rec department or the rec board would run themselves. Uh, but obviously, as a branch of the town of East Montpelier, we need to run things through the select board before any process, any decisions like that are made because we would be acting as representatives of the town. Uh, so I put together, along with the help of the board, these general rules and guidelines of which to be honest, I stole a lot of information from, from the city of Winooski. Uh, but basically, it's it kind of dictates how we would use the Facebook account and how we would um, moderate posts and, and things and, and appoint designated people to use the Facebook account. Um, it's a pretty short document, just over a page. Um, it's, it's obviously nothing that official, but the board has looked it over and approved it and would act according to these rules and guidelines that you see in front of you. It's a little complicated because we are an extension of the town. Uh, a lot of similar recreation programs don't have that um, 
oversight required because if they're not a part of the down there, their own 501c3, they can do whatever they want in terms of social media. But, you know, we're just basically making sure that the select board is okay with the rec board setting up a public Facebook account in which any records would be foiable because it's, it's all public record. Um, and with that in mind, you know, it'd be a very limited. Microphone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back. Well, I thought we're back. Microphone went down. I think it's back. Though. Yeah. Um, we didn't catch the last bit, from you, Mr. Fitch. That's all right. Um, basically, what? That oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not super important. It's basically looking to have the select board's approval of this of this document. No, right. I, I like the document. Um, what do you think, Kyle? Yeah, I, I looked through it quickly. I'm not yeah. familiar with. Um, any equivalent? What city did you say you, you stole it, most of it from? City Winooski. Okay. No, I'm not familiar with anything uh, equivalent, but just looking at it, um, it, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. Good to me. Mm -hmm. um, do we need a motion to approve? If you're willing to, yes. Yeah, I'll make that we motion. We could. Yeah. yeah. So Carl's making the motion. Do we have a second on that? And second John, that. John raised his hand before you, Amy. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Amy. I'm the referee, sort of. Uh, okay, so we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I aye. think I think the social. Oh, it's all. Everyone said aye. It's unanimous. Your social media rules and guidelines have been passed. And thank thank you for thinking this through and coming to us with this before setting up the yeah. account. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to uh, avoid any mishaps. You know, we don't want to. Beg for forgiveness, we'd like to actually seek permission first. first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. that's a good idea. We're impressed. So thank you. So um, All right. I think we're done with that item. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to hop off. Appreciate yeah. your help. Yep. Okay. Uh, ta -da. So we're a little ahead of schedule. Yeah, and my guess is Clarice might be able to tell us, but Zach is coming. Yeah, but what we could do is fit in some of these additions. Yeah. So that's what I was going to do. With the board's approval, sure. Sure. we're not going to rush through to the planning commission thing yet because Zach's not here. Uh, so the first thing is discussion on potential change of Taycon Drive so to Taycon Drive. Zach is not here. Oh, Zach's here? <laughs> well, let's, let's do this Taycon Drive because this doesn't look like a long item. <laughs> is this a long item? Hey, Zach. <laughs> Um, do we, uh, I don't know, do we have a request to fix it or is this? No, no, it, the change, the state that no longer allows hyphenated I've, names. I've read this, but I'm wondering okay. if there's a request to fix it or, or the, what? The fellow, uh, Mr. McCall, was, was less worried about requesting a fix as much as he was confused as to why Google was reading one way and, and uh, we're saying it a different way. Okay, how many houses are there? Is there three? There's four. Four? Okay, so this would affect four <laughs> landowners. Yeah, yeah. I so think there's a fifth lot. Okay. Something like that. Would it create a problem for uh, 911 calls and things? Only if, <laughs> it's a hyphen. It's hard to, it, Hard to say, it's gonna. Yeah, uh, right. why would it create, but, on the other hand, if it could, we ought to line it up with what the state allows. Mm -hmm. It so seems like it, that isn't going to hurt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I assume, I was going to think, yeah, maybe we should check in with the property owners there and see what they think. But on the other hand, I expect that the Postal Service will continue to deliver mail to them, whatever they write. Whether the tight hyphens are or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if we choose to make the official name unhyphenated, it's not really going to affect their lives. So so all we've got to do is rename the road without the hyphen. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Is that a motion? Uh, I think you just made that motion, John. <laughs> John made the motion. Don't move. Okay. 
We have a second? Amy. I'll second it. Oh, Carl already beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. And Bruce, will you notify them that we have... Taking the hyphen. Yeah. yeah. Taking the hyphen out. Um, the most work will probably be in our own databases. Oh, yeah. Because they'll have to be updated. Uh-huh. Uh, so that will probably cause us more dyspepsia than uh -huh. some of the blame owners. Right, right. Yeah, it, as you say, that there's no good reason with the alphabetization or anything that it should cause problems, but computers are stupid. <laughs> and you never know. When well, you're done? I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to keep going on with the additions to agenda because they're still really early. <clears throat> so just in all fairness for the other people that might tune into the Planning Commission discussion, let's just do the other two additions to the agenda. I think that's fair and equitable. I think it is. Discussion on potential change of delinquent tax collector. So the annual letters and notices of Lincoln tax taxpayers are about the week of May 23rd. The board should determine who will be the delinquent tax collector of record for this process in light of T.A. Johnson's retirement. So who are we appointing to that position? Who do you want to appoint? You had talked about for potentially appointing Michelle. Right. And she uh, and I have discussed this, and she is comfortable with that, if that is what the board wanted to do. Mm -hmm. What that about Jean Correa? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not for this one. <laughs> this is not going to work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I, I was talking about him earlier with his own I, I know. You have him on your mind. <laughs> I understand why. <laughs> but can we move off? Let's Jean move on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so I think Michelle um, would be perfect, especially if um, Gina and Michelle have discussed it, and she does have some experience with that. Is that true? She dealt with utility billing. Not yeah, well, she did deal with. She can do this. Yeah. Okay, so I would say that we should make the motion that Michelle Pappas is Palace, excuse me, the uh, delinquent tax collector. Move. John made the motion. I'm going to let Amy second. Amy made the second. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Very good. The next item is confirmation of agreement for FY 2022 Solvent Powers Audit. It's a routine thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we made a three-year agreement with them, and this is the last year, I think. But they like us to certify the individual year yes. as we this go is forward. This for the annual engagement yeah. letter, essentially. If comfortable, the board should either sign the agreement or authorize me to sign it. Um, we only have two years. So. I move to authorize the select board chair to sign the FY22 Sullivan Powers audit agreement. We need a second on that. I second that. Oh, Amy second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. Okay. So we did our three additions. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the road? Christine is here. Yes, sure. Um, the road that we just looked at? The curb cut, the road, yeah. all of that topic. Yeah. So... Um, I don't see any problem with the curb cut. Yes. Do you see any problem with the curb cut? <laughs> Why don't we talk about it? <laughs> um, so, do we have the paperwork? Is that on the website? I don't you have the paperwork. Guthrie did not want to do his normal sign-off on it right. until you had had your opportunity to discuss the road topic. Well, I, right. I, I didn't see any problem with the curb cut. So, so John and Amy, um, Seth and I were there looking at it with, with Guthrie and the landowners, and uh, when Bruce described it as a curb cut to a road that isn't really there, that, that was fairly accurate. Um, it's uh, technically a class four road, but uh, would require a fair amount of improvements to uh, take a lot of traffic, particularly to uh, allow emergency vehicles to get in and out. Probably just to, you know, get trucks in to build something there. 
But yeah. the curb cut aspect of it. And the curb cut is, is not probably the most sensible place that you could find. There's no traffic on the road. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. road. <laughs> yeah. So the curb cut, I think we could easily approve. <laughs> So is there an aspect that you're hesitant about, Seth? Yeah. What's it's a that? class four road, and I want to know what the state statute is as far as town's responsibility is, as far as pouring, pouring money into the road. The road, it, it's passable, but it's, I don't know what the state statute, at one point I did know the state statute, but I guess they've changed. Is that correct? I, I looked at the statute today, and this the town's responsible for, for culverts and bridges. So essentially... Right. Hydro, the hydraulics of the road and, and they've gotten a little bit more responsible because of the change with the new road permits even though it's a class four road it um it can't damage streams um yeah the water has to be turned off the road but the, the way the statute reads it responsible for bridges and culverts okay so the old no, no summer maintenance right oh. the old statute used to be that the town had to approve a culvert or a bridge in a class four road. What you're saying is this changed a little bit in that we were responsible for that? Is that correct? No, the, we were always responsible for the culverts so and bridges. Financially, we would have to put a culvert in. If the culvert was already there, uh, and it, it wasn't working. What's that? If the culvert was already there and was not working, the town would have to maintain okay. that culvert. Okay. But it's not right. necessarily required to put a culvert in. Because right. putting culverts in is not not really as easy as it used to be. Right. So okay. That's fine. But this this is not a passable road for a lot of different reasons. But it's a class four road. So in my take, if you buy a lot on that class four road, you would be responsible for upgrading that road if you wanted to upgrade. That's always been my take on the class four road. It doesn't sound like it's any different. It's we're, not, not, we're not responsible for gravel. And, on and the issue you would get on the class four road, if you did start, main, you would have to create a policy. And if you, yeah. and if you maintain one, you would essentially yeah. be maintaining all of them. And yeah. let me tell you, there's a reason why towns don't maintain certain roads. And yes. the reason is usually is they're really, really steep. There's a yep. significant amount of ledge, um, yep. so they can't. So they'd have to really build them up, and if they're really steep, then they're building them up and, and redoing them almost constantly because the, the material doesn't hold on the road. It's not a. There's always a really clear cut reason why somebody didn't maintain a class four. So this, this low, it class four road. It, it's the lowest spot in the land. So the lands on this side, the lands on this side, and the roads in the middle. The sunken road. Very common back in the day. I mean, it can be built up and ditched, et cetera, et cetera, but it's a significant expense. And I, I mean, statutorily, I don't think the town's responsible for that. That's, I think you just want to let these folks know that before they go in, get into it too far. Yeah, I think they probably knew that when they bought the land. I mean, if they looked up the statute, is that correct? Yeah, I think that we um, knew that we would be building off of a class four road if we weren't able to access from Fitch Road. I think that is correct. I think um, we had heard from some of the neighbors that there had been some talk around the town of upgrading the road to a class uh, three road at some point, but hearing this conversation now, it seems like that um, may have been a conversation of the past. There, there, may, there may have been some talk about it, but as John says, we have no policy about improving class four roads. We've always just gone by state statute, which is the waterway or the culvert or whatever. That's, that's been our policy all along. Um, so this, if we did anything to this road, we'd have to, it'd be a significant change in our town operations to date. Well, it would involve every class four road. Exactly. Well, well, Guthrie says there's not very many left, but I don't know how many are left, but. So do you want history or? Or do you want to go no. on from that? Go ahead. We have upgraded a number of the class four roads. Which one? We would have upgraded Johnson Road, which is really the class four road of concern, comparable uh -huh. concern. Uh -huh. uh, Brazier and Southern Bond. Those That's are both true. class four roads. Right. And they've been upgraded within the last 
18 years. To a class three? To class three, yeah. So what was the impetus to do that? Uh, there are people and the roads weren't passable. Right. So we upgraded them. Yeah. Generally, what towns do is they, they, they say, look, we'll give you a curb cut. You can go on this class four, class four road. We won't take it over unless you guys bring it up to our standard. I know. That's the thing. That's the way, it that's the way it's yeah, been. But that's not the way we did it. it and sounds we're like now we're down to 1.57 miles of class four road. Mm -hmm. The two roads that we care about here are Johnson Road and Donner Road. We knew this was going to come to us sooner or later mm -hmm. that we'd have to talk about Donner. We've talked about Johnson a number of times, and there's that split between some people wanting it to stay class four, some people wanting it to be class three. Right. And we've gone yeah. with the, the don't change since there's not unanimity. Right. There's not agreement on the class three, four, two, whatever. No, no agreement because of cutting down the trees, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Right. I couldn't make the uh, the tour today, and I apologize for that. Um, is there potential for more building on Donner Road further There's on a bunch, down? A bunch of lots okay. being sold on. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So there's two already developed on this untravelable, <laughs> untravelable, untraveled, uh, untraveled. <laughs> there's two already developed. There is Christine's lot that. Uh, was owned by Glenn Bailey. He passed away. This fell into his estate. The estate sold it. A second lot of his that's also on Donner Road uh, has been sold. There is also additional fitch land that is along Donner Road that in theory could be developed at some point. Um, right now the two people that are two residences that are on Donner Road for emergency services and such, I mean, there really is no emergency service access to either of them, but they're close enough to Wheeler Road in Callis that an ambulance can get to the lower house, it would struggle a bit more to get to the second house. What, to Doug that? Yeah, it's only because he's refined it a bit since he's been there that it's Right, no, it looks better than it did. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is better than it was. Yeah. Huh. So. So you're saying there's precedent for improving a class four road. That's basically what you're saying. Yes. Ha. Huh. And Mike Garen had a plan for this, as Christine was mentioning. Uh, there was a, a talk. Yeah, I remember the talk. Uh, yeah. It just never happened. Huh. And I was explaining to you what the statute says. And no, I I appreciate the, that. And, and um, I'm just. Well, I just want to say some towns follow the statute pretty closely. Some towns obviously don't. It looks like that we haven't always followed the statute, which I stand corrected on that because I thought we always had. But Bruce has pointed out there's two stretches of road in town that, are, that were class four have been upgraded to class three. So that leaves me in a little bit of a conundrum because evidently we haven't passed, we haven't followed the state statute always. So we can't just adhere to the state statute in this case. We're going to have to take other factors into account. Were the roads previously upgraded, Bruce, in a similar condition to this road? Oh, I'd say the roads uh, are probably This better. is much worse. Yeah, this is much worse. This isn't a bad this, spot, too. This, this is a bad legal trail, much less a bad class four yeah. road. <laughs> and as everyone knows, the legal trails in town, the houses are getting built upon, the residents are responsible for that, they live along the road. That's a legal trail, though. This is not a class four, so it's a slight, it's a different classification. Well, I think we're going to have to, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have to well, put I mean, this on the agenda. There are separate issues, the curb cut and yeah, the anything curb, we do with the road. Well, we can make a motion to approve the curb cut. Mm -hmm. I, have no, I don't have any trouble with that. Yep. And we can just move on and have this discussion in another meeting. Because mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a longer discussion than we're prepared for right now. We have mm -hmm. another topic coming up. So I would say that we... Do the curb cut, get that out of the way, and then work on the road. Because mm -hmm. it's touchy because we don't really have policy, we have precedent. Mm -hmm. So and we don't operate with starry decisis here. What's that? We don't operate with starry decisis here. Yeah. Not even the Supreme Court operates with starry decisis <laughs> anymore. All right. So um, what does everyone think about the curb cut? Let's get that out of the way. 
think right. it's, I mean, if you say that it's fine, and if Guthrie thinks it's fine, yeah. it's fine. It's, yeah. a, it's a legally developable piece of land according to the land use regulations, and uh, yeah. from everything we can tell, it's the uh, the best possible place to put a curb cut. Yeah. So I think we should move that. Just doesn't happen to be on much of a road. Yeah, <laughs> not, not a very good road, but the curb cut will be fine. Yeah. So we let's make a motion. Sure, I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay, Carl made the motion. And, and just for the sake of the record, the motion is to approve the curb, curb cut application for, what's the, uh, what's the address? 22 uh, 22021. New curb cut along Darrow Road. Road. Mm -hmm. He hasn't, uh, we can make it uh, conditional on Guthrie signing off on it because he hasn't signed right. off on Correct. it. Correct. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, the that's, that's the motion. That's the motion. That's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, so. Oh, we'll bring that up at, at uh, as soon as possible select board meeting as far as the improvements may or may not be made on that stretch of road. Yeah. We will definitely have a healthy discussion and figure that out. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, I got a curb cut. So Nate and Christine and what's the little one's name? This is Marie. She'll Marie. be starting at East Montpelier, hopefully in uh, <laughs> three years for preschool. Okay, yeah. well, well welcome you. soon to town. Welcome welcome yeah. to town as landowners and welcome soon as residents. Yeah. We'll, yes. we'll try to figure this out. Yeah, Thank you. and if you could just, um, I know Gina sent along the agenda in the Zoom. If if this comes up in the future, if we could be reached, that would be wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want you part of the discussion. Okay. So we'll reach Fabulous. out to you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thank okay. But All right, so getting back to business here. Discussion with Planning Commission Chair Zach Sullivan. Presentations of Select Board of Proposed Town Plan Amendments. Zach, you have the floor. Do you want me here or is it better from over there? Anywhere you want to be. Yeah. You have your own mic. Can't ask for better. Do you want a side? Do you want a side shot for a worker? Or do you want a front goal? That, that's the difference. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 Are I you worried about how you look on the camera? I, I'm not sure that I'm going to make or break Orca's ratings. <laughs> Ooh, they're pretty high. <laughs> um, so anyway, no. So I. So, so on May 5th, we held a you know we held a hearing on proposed um, amendments to the town plan primarily around um, you know, regulations for cell towers um, with a few corrections to the, to, you know, to the sections dealing with scenic views. Um, I'll deal with the scenic views piece you know, first, just as that is you know, much more straightforward. Um, there were a couple of error, drafting errors that we discovered initially, or you know, from the initial town plan. Um, in one, there is both a map of you know, you know, key scenic areas and a table in one case a road was on the map and not on the table, and in another case it was on the table and not on the map. Um, one of those areas was actually was affected by the proposed cell tower a couple of years ago, so that was a, you know, a hot topic, but that was that, you know, there was that issue there, so we've corrected that, and now it's on both. Um, also made just some minor clarifications to you know, what we mean by foreground. Um, the, 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 you know, you know, the town plan references half a foreground being the closest half a mile and there are special restrictions for the for the foreground the reason for that is that we you know is that we you know, there's research showing that within the first half mile you can really see the detail you know if you have if you have a cell tower described as a fake tree you're not fooling anybody in that first half a mile um, as it starts to fade out I and mean, clearly if you've got something sticking up farther than anything else and it's perfectly uniform you're going to notice that a ways out but you start to you start to lose that detail and you start to have more options um, the scenic views don't deal solely with cell towers. Um, it, it would be any sort of you know, major infrastructure. I think the other big one that's a potential would be solar farms, um, but it's but it's certainly the cell towers are what brought that to the fore. Um, and then also when in the you know in the you know in the discussion of you know, you know as we looked at the scenic views, you know we also had some suggested clarifications that came from the Re regional planning commission, you know. To, you know, to clarify the definition of a large solar installation. Um, so we made that correction as well, knowing that we would then also be going into the energy plan. So it's, you know, 
so that now our definitions align with what the PUC uses for you know, what is a what is a large scale project. Um, the you know, the rest of the scenic you know, view section is not appreciably changed. Um, the big you know the real big changes were we added a section to the infrastructure chapter, you know, dealing with the you know, you know, placement of well it's, it's it's all telecommunications towers. And cell towers are what tend to you know to make it an issue, but it could be. It could be any sort of you know, radio tower that someone put up. Um, it's in many ways it's modeled on the current energy section. Um, there's a you know, there's background, um, particularly looking at some of the state you know, at the current current cell reception in town. Some of the you know, trends in movement from reliance on landlines to reliance on cell phones um, and how why that is becoming an issue. Um, and then also some something that's really meant to you know, be more of an educational tool talking about the reg regulatory environment. Um, the big issue there is that the towns or even the state are not allowed to regulate health impacts of cell towers. And that was something that we were asked repeatedly to speak to in this process. And so we, ch you know, we chose to take some time to both to educate the public, to educate future planning commissions, future select boards, about what the constraints were around right. health. Um, then we had a section, you know, we looked at both you know, you know, pre preferred sites and you know, areas to be, avoid, you know, to be avoided, if at all possible. Um, preferred sites, obviously, anytime you can co-locate with an existing tower. Um, at this point, that is kind of moot because there are no towers. But at, you know, at the point at which one goes in to then say, you need to co-locate and not keep putting up more if that's not viable. Um, attached to in existing infrastructure, we had, you know, you know, a lot of the rural planning documents talk about, oh, put, put a tower on a, on a farm silo. And then Richard Hall informed us that, well, farm you know, silos are sort of going out of use. And so we took that language out, but I think some of the, lar when we look at the larger buildings around town, you know, you know, particularly once you get out of the more industrial, you know, in the industrial zone, a lot of it is farm related. Um, and then finally, we, you know, we looked at ways that the, you know, the one resource we do have is a lot of trees. So we looked at the way that topography could be used to, you know, to hide a tower, even a tower that has pretty significant you know, prominence of, of tree line. Um, we did put a picture in there, but you know, if you have, if you're standing at the road, you know, 100 feet away, there's tree line, the trees are up at, say tree line's 60 feet, you know, you're looking up at an angle. So another 100 feet below that, it has to be 120 feet up for you to see the thing. Another 100 feet, it's got, it got to be 180. And so those are the ways that we could sort of, you know, the hope was to both push applicants into doing that and also to providing good evidence that they had done it. Um, I think with the, with the you know, proposal on Jacobs Road that, start, that really started this, we didn't, there were some areas that were, were really significant scenic views that where we, they hadn't provided the evidence that that was actually the situation that was going on. Oh. And I think it would have been valuable to have that as a, you know, you know, you know, if this, you know, you know, this is a way that you can hide a tower even if it is quite a ways above tree line. I'm sorry, Zach, what were you saying about Jacob Grove? Were you unconvinced by the balloon flight? The, there were certain key areas where just no one had taken a photo. Okay. okay. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that that I think is more the more of the issue there. Okay. Huh. Um, and I think I will also say that we erred in not going out there ourselves for the balloon test, and that might have been, yeah. You know, and in future, I will not be making that mistake, so that we have someone who is not the applicant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Able to speak to that. Just so you know, yeah. had it gone forward, yeah. Guthrie did go yeah. out there, and he um, yeah. charted where mm. it was visible. Yeah. So that we had that information, but it never got anywhere. So Scott wants I, to say something. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say this. Oops. Oh. Amy, please mute yourself. <laughs> She's going to the other room. Um, okay. Yes, I, I actually, Amy and I actually went up and saw the balloon test. So th there was a planning commission individual there. And it's, you know, it, it's hard to just see with a little balloon sticking above a tree. 
Um, but we did go and see the test. Okay. Thanks, Scott. And so, yeah, and so areas we are really trying to avoid, um, you know, the, the village, um, we did, we did, we were really clear when talking about the village that we're talking about towers rather than transmitters, um, because there are ways of hiding a transmitter, you know, yeah. in, in, particularly in buildings. But the tower, just getting back to the tree line and all, you're saying that you could put a 180 foot tower in as long as the trees go up and then the tower is not above the tree line. This, this illustrates it. Yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, so, right. the t so the tower would actually, so if it's really more if you put the tower back far enough in the woods yeah. and no one's really coming, you know, no one has a cl you know, clear open shot across to it, yeah. you, know, you can, you know, you know, the tower is effective. There's one in Plainfield that's, that's like that now. If, if, you, if you stumble on the tower, you go, wow, that's, that's a ways up. Yeah. But th just where it's situated, there's no, there's no open field right next to it. And right. so you're, you know, you, you really don't get a good look at yeah. it. Huh. Can you remind me what the standard height is for the proposed projects around here? I wanted to say 350 feet, but that just sounds ridiculously big. It wasn't that big, was it? No. So there is, there's a cutoff at 140 feet where you go okay. from being, I forget, I forget the designation. The, the Public Utilities Commission has a different designation for, a pro, for towers up to 140 feet and then above. And yeah. so there is a there's a strong incentive to build your tower about 139 feet and nine inches tall. Um, <laughs> um, and, but, th but then above that, it could go up a ways. I believe there's a tower being proposed in Worcester right now, and I believe that is proposed for 200 feet. That's the one I got the feet. Just got we just got notice for that, didn't we? I got an email. Yes, about it. it got pulled out. We got pulled out. Yeah. Um, sounded like the same result as ours. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, done. Done. Yeah. So, so yeah, they certainly can go. They, they certainly can go higher, but I think, I think you, yeah, I, I think a, you know, seeing hundred and forty foot tower proposals is probably going to be pretty common. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the other unsuitable areas, um, you know, areas that are in, you know, impacting significant, you know, public views, particularly in the in the foreground of those views. Yeah. Um, you know, ridge lines, and then and the zoning regs deal with this as well. But areas where it could damage a home or a sensitive environment if it fell. Yeah, I was wondering about that language uh, here. I um, wonder if, if there's a way on page 96 to make it clearer um, that it's talking about possible falling towers that would lead to the damage. Because, as you mentioned, you know, the federal government has preempted health uh, regulation, so. It's, we aren't going to say anything about the radiation damaging homes or central or people in them mm -hmm. or sensitive natural environments. But your concern was uh, that we don't say anything about the falling home. Right. It, it, that's clearly that's the intent as far as I hear from you and what I, I read between uh -huh. the lines here, but I think it could be expressed a little more clearly. Yeah, let me, I can take that back and see if that is a if that is, a, you know, you know, how we could deal with that. Um, I mean, it might just be adding a word, like in areas where a falling tower could damage homes. Yeah. Or a toppling tower, if you like the alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will, I will bring that feedback. Toppling you know, tower, okay. Yeah. All right. Back to the planning commission. Okay. Um, and then we do have, you know, go, you know, proposed goals and actions around this. Um, to, you know, it was a goal to provide adequate cell coverage and meet the needs of residents while protecting you know, scenic and natural resources. Um, there are, there's a goal and policy that are very similar. Um, we do have actions both to, you know, you, you know basically compelling the, 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 the PC to you know, file as a, either file as an intervener or to submit public comments if a proposed tower does not meet our standards. So basically, say, basically forcing us to follow our own rules um, and then there is an action to, you know, consider whether we should conduct an inventory of you know, what we consider to be good locations. Um, we haven't, we had some significant discussion on that. We have not, you know, we haven't come to any conclusions. The, you know, basically the, the purpose of that action is to ensure that when we, that we address this when the next town plan is written. Um, and there, I mean, the thinking, 
there are definitely two sides of thinking. I mean, the, the first is to, to be really clear of, you know, here's where, you know, you know, to be very straightforward, this is what we think is good, this is where we could do this. There was also real concern of, is this putting a target on certain properties? And given, is it worth doing that, given that the landscape, it, that it's a really a regional issue, and, you know, will the landscape just keep changing? You know, and will our plan be sort of instantly out of date? You know, if we say, you know, if, if we look at the map and say, here's the area that needs that it has a poor reception on the area that you're sort of in the you know in the northern corner, which is the border's middle, you, know, you could put a tower in, you know, nor the northern corner of East Montpelier in Middlesex in or in Worcester, and they would all serve the same area, and so we could you know the, the you know the plan could change suddenly yeah. based on something that happens in another town. And so there's a question of, will that actually be a worthwhile exercise? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot of work too. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like a lot of work in an area where we do not have particular expertise. It's probably a lot easier just to wait for applications and make sure you follow your own mm -hmm. policies here. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there is a strong sense of that, but not a unanimous one, oh, really? I would say. I mean, you've, you've created guidelines, you've created yeah. areas where we prefer to have cell towers and yeah. areas yeah. where we prefer not to have cell yeah. towers. You have standards. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good start. So how does this compare with what other towns have done? We did not find a lot of other towns that had, that, that had guidelines that were, that were really robust at all. Okay. Um, a little bit about avoiding ridge lines, a little bit about co-locating, okay. you know, but not, I didn't see anything you know, that went sort of the, it was close to the scale of what we went to. So if we pass this, we'll have the most robustest plan around in this area? Probably, yeah. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's good in that it tells people what to expect. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, we were caught flat-footed with the one on Jake, the proposal yeah. on Jacob Road, and this is, I commend you for responding to that and thinking through um, what we could do to avoid being caught flat-footed. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't send the message that we're against it. No. Just, we're just delineating what we expect when you make the plan. Right. It's like, this is, you know, we don't want in this area or this ridgeline, blah, blah, blah. So it still allows for that development, which I think we need to do. People want to sell service. They do. Yeah, and, and actually between the fact that there are goal, the goals, you know, the goals and policy do, do sort of point to that balance yeah. of wanting cell service but also not wanting to right. damage certain areas. But, you know, but between the fact that there are preferred you know, yeah. sites listed and yeah. there is that goal and that policy, if, yeah. if a developer came in proposing a tower in an area that met those criteria, it would be extremely hard for the town to fight it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right. And, and oh yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. No. So, so, yeah, like yeah. so, so in that way, it does encourage yeah, as well. Right, as, mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, what, it, what does discourage me is when you have the buyout uh, mm -hmm. aspect of landowners getting together and buying that person's right out to yeah. develop it. I, I'm not sure that I'm in favor of that process because of what it does, is it pits, it's, it's almost a class issue. Yeah. People mm -hmm. that have money can influence yeah. what happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in favor of that. Yeah. So going down the road, we'll just have to see what happens. But mm -hmm. that, that was a pretty interesting process. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, this is interesting. And, <laughs> and were you implying, Bruce, that that was a similar process with a buyout that happened in Worcester? They didn't do a buyout, did they? Since we got that it could have yeah. been that way. No. Right. Okay. Uh, we didn't get any details. Okay. But I, I don't think it did, do it. What? They, don't, they didn't do a buyout from what I... Read. We didn't get any details. Yeah, true, we didn't. We just got a sense yes. that something shifted. Right. So something did shift. Yeah. And we don't know what. Right. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I don't know how much we... Because I, I, I'm bothered by the class issues yeah. as well. Um, yeah. I think there is... I think when there is... I mean, we, I mean, obviously, you know, these are private con contracts. There's only so much the town can be involved in, right. in that. I do think that maybe adding that level of certainty um, 
of which you know, would, would, would help. So if, you know, if you've got a clear plan, yeah. you've got a clear plan of saying, is this a good location? Right. Someone might be someone who's in a good location might be less tempted to take a buyout. Whereas if you're not, if you're if you're dealing with community you know, outcry, and you don't really know what the town's going to do, you don't yeah. really know what the PUC is going right. to do. You're just it's, it, you might money. be tempted to take less money that's certain, right. mm-hmm. rather than say, right. no, this is a thing I'm allowed to do with my land. Right. But I mean, clarifying the town's position in the plan is certainly a worthy undertaking. And I commend you for doing that, and I like what you've done. I do still think that you need to be aware of the class issue that's going on here. You yeah. really need to be. And as we move forward, we'll see what happens. So. But just a quick thing on that. I mean, isn't the whole thing a class issue? I mean, just AT&T going to people and who's going to be willing to do this and knowing that their neighbors are going to be really mad. They're making them an offer. The whole thing is just rotten. And it's not just the negotiation. But the thing is that if AT&T comes into a town and approaches a landowner about putting a cell tower on, if they've got firm guidelines to go by, and the, um, the AT&T meets all the criteria that the town has set forth, it still does not prevent people that have money to come along and to buy that landowner out. It does not prevent that. And the thing about it is then you've got money is overtaking every other criteria in the in the room, and I'm not yes, sure. Yes, but the- but it already was to begin with because AT and T went and preyed on somebody that needed the money, and knowing that the neighbors are going to be up in arms about it anyway. I mean, that's well, the whole AT- thing is rotten. AT and T is looking to further their best interests by putting in the cell tower, but I'm not sure you're going to say that's preying on somebody. That's a give and take financial agreement. I mean, I think we're getting a little bit too far into the philosophical weeds here. Maybe I just wanted to make that one point. That's all. Okay. <laughs> so I think I, I think, think that, to I think Zach's point is a good one. Yeah. Though that, that might have gotten lost in, in this discussion after he made it, and that is that uh, if uh, the town plan is amended in this way, and AT and T comes to a landowner and says, "We'd like to build a cell tower on your land, and here's why." the town yes. plan right. um, says it's a good idea, mm-hmm. then the landowner might be more interested in saying yes to the money from AT&T uh, right. because meet the criteria. they meet the criteria rather than to a smaller amount. That, um, right. Um, well, as, as I've said before, that landowners. what what the planning commission has done with the town plan is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And that's all we're addressing right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, thank you. <laughs> Do you have more to tell us about this? Um, I guess just the last thing I forgot on the on the scenic view piece. One one thing I did forget is we also added an action when we did the scenic views initially. It was only based on you know areas that were accessible by, on roadways. Yeah, we did sort of look and go. Oh, there there's also the you know this you have the East Montpelier trails which are right. which are protected for the public as sort of because you'd be considered a part of public infrastructure. Yeah, we didn't add any of that to the um, to the scenic areas, but did. Did put an action item to make sure that that is considered as potential scenic area when that is review, revised again. Huh. Um, but yeah, no, that is. I guess the last the last thing I would say is that the sort of at, from the hearing, the sort of the predominant comment we got was about impact on property values, and should the town be cons- should the plan be considering impact on property values? Should the town be considering that? Um, the we considered whether we should add that something about that to the to you know, basically the educational section on regulation. Um, the Public Utility Commission does not, you know, as practice, does not consider property values when making yeah. these decisions. Um, whether they, you know, whether they could or not is murky. It is not banned in quite the same way that health is. Yeah. Um, the I did look at some of the evidence. The evidence on this is quite frankly a mess. Yeah, um, the, I would imagine. The, the studies are generally not well done, mm-hmm. um, and some of the better ones actually point to potentially an increase in right. property value. So exactly. it's not because you get cell service now. Of course. Yeah, but that's it's good. I mean it's it's a mess of you've got it, it once you throw out anything that's industry funded <laughs> or interest group funded, <laughs> right. you're left with very little. I would say that you would be wise to stay away from that. Yeah. Yeah. So. so is this a 
presentation, a uh, submission of the proposed plan or amendment that triggers the uh, requirement on uh, hearings? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is your formal turnover. Yep. Yep. So we need to do something within 30 to 120 days with this. But we have to have a hearing on this? I think we do. Two. Two hearings. Yeah. So we should do that at our regular select board meetings. You could. Yeah. As soon as possible. Um, so we don't get out the. Again, the, you've got the zoning regs also. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you could piggyback hearings. Yes. Uh, so That's what we probably should do. String yeah. these out forever. No, we don't want to string them out forever, and we should piggyback the hearings. Right. We probably should do it at the fire station if possible, just because we may have a lot of people. But. Yeah, there were a lot. We, we had very few people show up for, for this one. Yeah, and, and that's and probably what would happen with us. The planning stuff, though, is a little more, grabs people's attention a little bit more on zoning changes. Yeah. So if we're going to do them together, I think we should do it over there. And, and what if the collective wisdom is adding coupling or falling or making some other change to clarify that I mentioned? Uh, is a good idea. Where where does that come into play? Could we make that modification after the hearing so it doesn't have to go back to the planning commission? The so board? the planning commission could do it for you. You could do it uh, okay. as long as everybody's on the same page that it doesn't you know hit that significant level yes. of yes. change, okay. change that yeah. triggers planning commission taking it back. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. okay. So we have a few minutes left. We, this was kind of a twofer, was it not? Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. Sure. So are we going to figure out what we're going to do in terms of scheduling hearings? We can. Yeah. You could, or yeah. you in particular had questions for Zach on the zoning regs. Right. 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 But right. so I'm wondering whether we wanted to finish that up. No. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, whether you were going to need more time, we were going to bring Zach back potentially uh -huh. on June 6th, right. which might change how you. Stagger the hearings. Yeah. Okay. So we can't make a decision on the time right now. Got it. But we can ask that some questions about the zoning plan. Yeah. Change. If you guys ask your questions and decide you're ready to go forward, we can go forward. We can get a hearing warrant for June six. Yeah. Well, let's let's. We got a few more minutes here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we have for questions about the zoning plan. Um, you had some? I did a couple weeks ago. Okay, yes, so did I. Uh, but we have John here who's looking like he wants to say something. Uh -huh. And John had originally mentioned the regulations about fencing, and they seemed kind of onerous. But then we had a lot of pushback. We discussed it because everyone said, well, we never enforce those anyway. So my, my view was, why do we have stuff in there we don't enforce? Why should we have it in there? What do you think? I, I don't recall ever discussing the pieces on f fencing. I'm clear well, 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 maybe you didn't. I think he just saw that in the regulations. It wasn't that you changed it. He was like, what are you talking about? You have to take down the snow fence and this and that. Didn't we just talk? Didn't we, we talked about it last meeting. And what we said was that there was nothing about fencing in any of these potential changes. So we should probably not even worry about it. Okay. Right, so what you were saying is there wasn't up for grabs at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you were pointing it out that um, how, how restrictive East Montpelier is, and it's an awful place to live. I, so. no, I looked at that and I thought it was pretty funny. I said, I must violate the snow fence rules every single year if I don't get them down before May 1st. <laughs> now, if I'm traveling somewhere, I'm going to be in real trouble. I'm going to come home and the cops will be waiting for me. <laughs> Dina, Dina will be waiting. And, and I said, well, the zoning administrator that we have right now is not going to enforce it, but the new one might. <laughs> yeah, so what I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, Claire, Scott, or Bruce can jump in here if needed. Um, we, a, a, a number of the things that we dealt with were areas that were specifically causing problems. You know, the setbacks were just causing problems. I don't believe any of, you know, my understanding is that the, you know, maybe just because of non-enforcement, the, the fencing issues didn't show up on our radar because they haven't caused problems. Because it's never been enforced. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, setbacks were great. Um, we re did review those pretty thoroughly, and thank you for addressing that. Yeah. 
because setbacks and have been a problem. And it sounds like you reduce them a lot in yeah. every area, and yeah. that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah. So that was one concern. What's mm -hmm. another one? I can't find. Well, we notes, talked. I don't remember. We talked about um, PUDs. Yes. Extensively. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you've made some changes there, or have you? We did. Now I'm trying to remember all of the details about them. It's, I mean, partly there were... There are no more PRDs or only PUDs. The, so, yeah, I think the PRD, you know, getting rid of PRDs, I believe that was, you know, in response to, to legislation. Yeah. The PRDs just yeah. were taken out. Um, you know, PR, uh, so for, for people who don't know the acronyms, you know, uh, PRD is a um, planned residential development. Right. Uh, PUD is a planned unit development Yes. PRDs are a subset of, or P PRDs are a subset of PUDs, yes. and so it's still it's still certainly possible to do a PRD. It's not just under the PUD language. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're pretty clear on mm -hmm. that. Can I, say, can, can I say something? Yes. We I, want I, to. Think, I, I looked. I looked at those at those those rules pretty thoroughly, and I and I and I. Obviously, I don't have a I don't have a business or anything in the village, or and I'm not being negatively impacted. Being I'm just in the uh, residential commercial zone right now, um, and I the, what I looked at, I I thought that they were pretty really well done, and um, I don't think they're too invasive. And I do like the idea that um, uh, with the smaller lots, potentially if people can find wastewater treatment um, and appropriate water supply, they should be able to. Um, allow development to occur in, in areas as opposed to tying up 10, 15, 20 acre lots of property to try to get, you know, try to get a house in. And I think it works out. I think it works out well having those clustered like that. I think it's going to help out the village more too. So, so one of the things that we talked about last time, I just reminded Carl, was the parking requirements. So they were a little looser on Mm -hmm. parking requirements in the business district for potential businesses because yeah. it was quite a process to go through before and you loosen that up a little bit. Yeah, so could you tell us about that reasoning? Yeah, so we, so the gen, the idea is if you're trying to make something that is denser, more, you know, you know, you know hopefully more walkable, you don't want, you know, park, you, you don't want, you know, to be taken up by parking lots. And so, we switched it from being a you know, fairly high minimum, you know, drop, drop the minimum yeah. amount of parking requirement it required. Mm -hmm. There is now some parking, you know, I mean, there is just default maximum parking, so to encourage less you know, area being given over to parking lot. Yeah. Um, and the, but then there is also a process if, you know, if someone wants to come, you know, you know, if someone has a specific reason that they think they're going to need to you know, need to have more parking. They can do a you know, do a study and bring that to the DRB. Yeah. So there is still an avenue to have right. more parking, but the default is not to have as much. Yeah. And is I didn't see it. Is there any provision uh, for your new lower minimum levels of parking? Is there any provision to push them even lower? Like for example, somebody says. Uh, hey, look, I'm only going to be using this business Monday through Friday, and the church next door, the church down the street, has said that I can rent parking from them. They only use it on Sundays. I'm trying to, I don't think so. Okay. I'm trying to remember if that's if there would be a pop. Did you discuss that? I don't think we did discuss it. Okay. I, I think it was mostly, you know, it, it was mostly the discussion was mostly that we are going to. Yeah, redu yeah, reduce the parking requirement, but I don't think there there wasn't a discussion of anything that was sort of getting more, you know, more creative about yeah. sharing parking. Okay. As far as I remember, I will, if I go back home and look at the regs and realize I screwed that up, I will let you know. <laughs> okay. Well, we've so, got Scott and Clara. So there is something in there. There is. Okay. But not necessarily what you just described, the leasing from mm -hmm. the private church, mm -hmm. but the public spaces can be counted in Creative we ways. read that. Yeah. Yeah. That public spaces could be counted as potential parking spot mm -hmm. for a business. We read that. Okay. Yeah. The challenge with the private ones has always been the same. You're counting spaces twice. Yeah. And you need mm -hmm. to be careful, and there's nothing in there about that kind of and thing. And sometimes use pattern makes counting them twice appropriate. No argument. We, yeah. we discussed just, that before. It, it is a war, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. We want to put that in the regulation or not. 
I guess you could. You could think about some ways to allow creativity without specifying exactly how that, I mean, just a mechanism for yeah. the field. Well, we've definitely moved in the right direction. We start talking about using public spaces as part yeah. of the process, yeah. which, which works. Because we've definitely, you know, we're, we're on a better side of the equation when we're a little more liberal about the park. Right, right. And the idea here is that we want, we, we are phasing out, looking at phasing out the use of uh, private automobiles and uh, yeah, yeah. don't want to be encouraging them. What else was there that we were concerned about? Because if we're not too concerned about specific things, we can move to the next stage, yeah. which is a hearing process, which we'd like to do along with the town plan efficiently. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, hang on for one second. Hang on. Do, you, do you want to schedule the town plan first and then do a double hearing second? Or do you want to do a double hearing first and have the second town plan hearing later? Double hearing first. All right. Yeah. So you could do that on June 6th if you wanted to. Yeah. Or you could do it on June 20th or whatever. Yep. Do on June 6th. Um, what, but what time of day? What about not less than 30 days? Don't we have to wait 30 days after tonight? To well, that's a good point. Yeah. That's right. About the town plan. Yeah. 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 So we'd have to do that. Yeah. But the, the town plan is... Yeah. Was it two for the town plan? Yes. Yeah. D does that clock start tonight or when we pass our motion to send to send it to the select board? Ooh. So I'm going to be... That's a good question. <laughs> it, it's even worse than that. Uh, both of these statutes clearly state that any discrepancy in the timing doesn't affect the validity of the select board's actions. So if you wait longer, which is what usually happens, it does not affect the okay. end result. And the presumption is if it's true if you wait longer, it would also be true if you jump the gun. Mm -hmm. um, but... Ooh. Yeah, let's not go jumping guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the very first one we could have is going to be the middle of June. So it should be June, what, when's our meeting? The 20th. 20th. Yeah. So we could do it June 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Two hearings. Two hearings. Start yeah. at 6, 6.30, 7. What late as possible. Do? As late as possible. So the normal meeting time, 6.30. <laughs> yeah, 6.30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the longest day of the year, practically, so no problem. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that would work. And then the planning commission thing would be done. Because that's just one. The zoning. The zoning. Yes. I mean. Yeah. The zoning yeah, could just, be done. Could if be done. Ready to move forward. Yes. Because what you'll do is you'll have the hearings up front mm -hmm. and then you'll have your regular meeting afterwards. Yes. And if you make a decision, it's right. Perfectly fine. Yep. It depends on what comes up. Yeah. Yeah. So that should work. Thank you. And then we'd have the second one for the uh, town plan, July, whatever. Yeah, what you haven't is. chosen a July meeting date right, yet. Right, because it always conflicts with July 4th. So yeah. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Sounds yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all your work, and yeah. I like the results, and, yeah. and we'll move it along. All right, thank you. Sir. We're thank not going to sit around chewing the fat over it. We're going to present it to the public and see what happens. All right, very good. I hope we have some more people come in for it than you did. Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah, Ho hopefully. Ho ho hopefully, like, being re really in person would, would make it easier. Oh, I know. It makes I think having remote better. hearings was not helpful for that. Yeah. 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 And the thing about having the two is maybe drawing more people. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks again. All right, so the next thing is conversation with East Montpelier Fire Department Fire Chief Larry Brown. And for those people standing out there, we have more chairs here and more space there if you want to sit down. That's going to be ready to respond. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Larry. They're on duty. Hello. Thanks for opening up a spot for us this evening. We really appreciate it. So I understand you're the new fire chief. Uh, each May, the fire department holds its annual meetings. Yeah. And at that meeting, the president, board of directors, fire chief are elected. And on the last, uh, the first Tuesday of the month, I was elected as the fire chief. I've been with the department over 20, 25 years. 
I've been in the EMS fire service for over 40 years. Um, worked under the capable direction of Ty Rowland for 10 years. Uh, at that meeting, the membership decided to make a change. Uh, tonight with me, I have several board of directors people here. I have several firefighters that have come in. Uh, it's, we're aiming this tonight is just to let you know if, that the cooperation between the select boards, we want to really keep an open line of communication, more so than probably in the past, utilizing our board of directors. Uh, you function as a board, elected board, we do the same thing. Our board of directors make the decisions. Uh, the chief is part of the board of directors. Uh, we have a president, vice president. Jay Copping is the vice president. Toby's the president. You have Albert Petrella, Sandy Conti uh, on the board, currently on the board, a few other members that are officers on the department. So our ultimate goal is and has been to open a clearer understanding of what we do, how we do it. In one way that I think that can be accomplished is I don't know if you've ever seen our bylaws for the East Montpelier Fire Department. The bylaws give us an overview of how the department runs, and we are going to follow that as our guide as we move ahead with the select boards, that the board of directors will have a bigger part to play in the meetings that we hold quarterly with you. Um, the chief won't always be the spokesperson. Uh, the president, vice president, board of directors will have input as they are supposed to by the bylaws have input. Um, any questions? Not so far. So what I'm going to just give you, I don't know how many, I've got several copies here of the bylaws that I can leave with you. I think you, I've read them actually, but yeah, it's I good for, uh, for other members that don't have them, yeah. but you can see the structure of what we do. We're a 501c3 public organization, volunteer organization. So we want to make sure everything is open, right above board, questions. If you have to ask a question more than once, there's no problem with me. I'm, I have to ask a question more than twice, it seems like, to, to make sure I understand it. Um, so our ultimate goal is, as agreements come up, as various types of uh, situations arise, that we can have a real open communication. And I, I haven't met you yet, are you? I am Gina. Gina, okay, we talked on the phone briefly. Yes. Okay, um, I'm glad you're taking Bruce's place. You know, you're better looking than he is, so we'll just, <laughs> we'll make sure we work on that. So the ultimate goal is uh, at the meetings that we hold with the select boards is to answer everything that you need answered in a clear and understandable way. We don't run a complicated organization. I think you've seen in the past, the financials are audited and kept in, in close contact with the, the people, the accounting firm we have. Uh, and at any time, I'm open for a phone call, uh, if you have a question, or the board of directors. And what I'm going to submit to you, and I'll have that tomorrow to you, is the numbers for the board of directors, the president, vice president, and the board of directors, so that as questions arise and things come up, the board will be discussing these things. These will not be the decision of one or two people. They'll go back to the board of directors, and that's our ultimate goal. Uh, right now, things, the fire department, you know, has had an abundance of calls, a lot of EMS calls. If you're here during the day, you've seen the ambulance go by two or three times today. Um, we're staffed, we're working on staffing, we've got some schooling coming up for advancing several of the EMS personnel to a higher level of training. Uh, we're recruiting several new people that have come on the fire department, which is our ultimate goal is to strengthen it with younger people. Uh, and we're seeing, it seems that we're having some interest in people that want to come back into EMS work. We're going to be promoting that also through the signpost, through various other aspects, uh, Front Porch Forum and Callis, East Montpelier and beyond. Uh, all the departments around us are searching for candidates. Uh, so we're looking at ways to enhance that, showing people that they can become advanced emergency medical technicians, 
that they can earn a fairly decent living at it if they can employ full time with it. And it's a relatively short course to take to get your EMT license and then move up to your advanced. Then if you want to go two years to paramedic school, you can do that. We're fortunate in East Montpelier that we have a number of highly qualified paramedics. And uh, it was proven today, I went on a call today, where a paramedic administered a life-saving technique to a person. So these things are right in the field. Uh, he administered a technique that usually the hospital does. But we do have highly skilled paramedics. I'm an advanced emergency medical technician, and so I'm one level below that paramedic level. So we do have qualified, trained people ready to respond. Uh, any questions for us at this time? So the board of directors, how many are on that? The board of directors is seven people. The president doesn't vote unless there's a tie. There's the vice president, and there's four other uh, boards elected for two-year, one-year type periods. The chief is also a member of that board. Okay. We meet monthly. We meet on the last Wednesday before the first Tuesday before our regular monthly meeting. Every Tuesday, we have the meetings. Um, first meeting of the month is the general meeting of all the department where we discuss business at the business meeting. Second one is usually uh, EMS related, where we do training, or the third one will be a work night. Sometimes we put an officer's meeting in on that. The fourth one would be a fire department training and if there's a fifth Tuesday, we either split that into fire and EMS or both. So every month we're meeting four or five times at the station. So it's an ongoing training process. Uh, as the chief, I've appointed officers to handle training, to handle all the different aspects of the organization. I don't believe in one person doing everything. One person can't do everything. I have a super group of people that have skill sets that we utilize their strong points. And it's something that I think uh, we need to show the younger people coming into our department that they're important. That the skill sets they present us with, whether it's electronic media that we can help the department grow, or whether it's new, fresh ideas, we're looking at that. Uh, my ultimate goal in, for my position is to train two or three people to take that position. I believe strongly in mentoring, and our goal now is to take the young officers, which we have two or three of them here tonight, and train them up so that down the road, when I retire, you know, I, I'm retired right now, I only work about 70 hours a week, so that's in EMS and ambulance work. My work week is 40 to 60 to 70 hours a week on that. And with the fire side, I'm putting that into a position where I do what the bylaws indicate for the fire chief, and that's to handle the fire side of the service. Ambulance side, the board of directors will be working on, and we will see how that works out as we appoint other officers, other EMS people for that. Okay, so the board of directors is seven. The chief is one. Yes. That's you. And who's the president? The president is Toby Talbert. Toby. Right now. Toby. Vice president is Jay Copping. Jay, yep. Uh, Paul Jay. Guare. Uh, excuse no. me, Paul Guare. Uh, the vice president is Paul Guare. Paul Guare. Okay. And we have Albert Petrella. Yeah, Albert, yeah. And we have Sandy Conti. Yeah. We have John McGuigan. McGuigan, I think it's pronounced. I'm not sure if it's. John word. McGuigan? Okay. Yeah. And who's the fourth? Uh, who do we have as the fourth member? That's going to be voted on. Oh, yeah, that's an yeah. open one-year position to fill a position. That's voted on next Tuesday night. There's okay. two people running for that. Alex Boguszewski, who's right here. Yeah. And Ty Rowland is running for that position also. Okay. And, and there's uh, Judy Woodback there is our secretary treasurer. She doesn't vote. She's just on the okay. board. So six members vote. Yep. Seventh is the president who votes on a tie. The president votes on a tie. On okay. break a tie. Yeah. And what role does Ty have in the organization now? I know he was a chief. Uh, he is what we call K-4. He's an assistant chief. I, I, As the chief, I can appoint officers to carry out various aspects of the organization. And I've...
put him into what's called an assistant chief position. The structure, the command structure of the department is the chief, there's two deputy chiefs, and then there's two assistant chiefs if we so desire. Paul Guerre is an assistant chief, and uh, Toby Talbert is K3 number, which is a deputy chief. There's no K2, that was my previous number. I have not assigned a K2 deputy chief's position. Okay. And Ty has been assigned to the assistant chief to use, utilize his skill set, his valuable contributions that he's made in the past. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And again, I just want to reiterate the goal with me is I'm very workable. I want to make sure you understand our operation as clear as you can possibly understand it. There's no hidden agenda, no mirrors and smoke. It's, it's right up front. And this is what I use as my guide right here. I can't go wrong if I follow the, the organization's bylaws uh, and utilize the strengths of the people that I have with me in the organization. Well, thank you for taking the opportunity to come over and present. We appreciate it. There was another agenda item. Is that anything that we should be concerned about tonight? Well, that's nothing we can really talk about because it's going to be an executive session, okay. but we'll let you know right. if there's anything that comes out of that. All right, we really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you of very course, much. Of course we would. Okay. Thank, thank you, you again. On that. And I think I've given Bruce my cell number. Did I give you that? Yeah. Okay, so if you need to contact me at any time, I'll feel. Oh, absolutely. Thank okay. you very yeah. much. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank, thank you. Thanks to all of you for the work. Thank you, you. Thank you for time. coming in and putting a face on things. Give you those kernels. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. And Larry, are these on your website or for, for our select board members who aren't here tonight? Do they need to come in and get these? I don't think they're on the website. I'll give you a co the copies. We have hard copies there. That's why I have them not. I don't think they're posted. Okay. I'm wondering if you could email us the copies so we can get them to the select board members. Toby's our email specialist yeah. and our computer specialist. Okay. We can see what we can do. Okay. Great. Well, Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks again, guys. All right, thank you. Guys and girls. So we could, on item E, we should just put that more towards the end because we have personnel matters that could be executive well session too. So let's move together. together. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to move to F, which is town treasury report. Um, what do we have for that? Don is here. If he wants to talk, Michelle isn't. She wouldn't have told me. Right. <laughs> but Don is here. Oh, Don, so we have a treasury report, I think, somewhere in here? Let me get my sound. And, okay. Um, yeah, it's just the, the regular. I don't think there's anything uh, special to bring to the floor at this point. Um, I do want to mention that uh, after having spent just better than a week with Michelle. She's doing a great job. Um, since Tuesday, I didn't enter in any tax payments or do any of that. I was there as a, as a guider, not a doer, and it worked out very well. Nice. That and sounds very tomorrow, good. Tomorrow we start on new stuff. Good. So the process is coming along then. Yes, it is. And we did pretty well. We're, we're on taxes. We've got uh, 234,000 to left to collect. Um, and the ballot, I mean, the blue box is basically open till midnight uh, tonight. And anything that's in there in the morning will be declared on time. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Dawn? Nope. Uh, I don't you might know. you might note in there that just one of the things is that our multi million dollar balance gets you know got one hundred and seventeen dollars this in interest and the. Our fees for for uh, the bank fees, which are positive pay and so forth, that costs us almost one hundred and thirty dollars. 
So <laughs> if you don't make much, of course, our balance, balance will go down quickly when we pay the school uh, next right. week or first of the next month. Yeah. Hmm. Our capital reserve is still okay at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Can we do the saving? Saving, we can you vote. Uh, right. Don, do you want to comment on this extra highway department payment, E-Trains payment? Um, I don't know that I can comment on it because I don't recall. Then I'll comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a, a, a secondary oh. April payment of around 38000 and change. So instead of our normal 40000 per month, we nearly doubled that in April. Bank also, error in your favor? Not quite. <laughs> the day's the month. not error in our <laughs> favor. <laughs> so if you look at the revenues, you'll see that we're 50,000 hot on that line mm. to the good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why. And are we going to not get a May payment? or we, We're done for payments for the year unless they do another special yeah, one. June payment, yeah. Okay. Uh, but we are, as I said, we're 50,000 up okay. above expectations. Okay. Huh. So. All good. Better than nothing. Yeah. Good job, Don. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I just pulled it in. Yeah. <laughs> good job, Bruce. Ah, boy. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this one either. <laughs> it just showed up. <laughs> okay, so it looks like um, we don't have anything more on the town treasury report. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Don. Have a good evening. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Oh, we'll enjoy it a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Discussion on Green Up Day funding. Oh, this is the one. I'm glad you're here for that, Amy. Because you weren't happy about that. <laughs> I, I'm going to need some. I'm going to need some additional explanation besides what's in the the memo. I don't blame you. Yeah. So the the short story on this is I. Um, went to the drop-off on Green Up Day, and Chris, our, our coordinator is Chris Racanelli. Yeah. Yes. Chris uh, met me with Aaron, and I don't know her last name. Uh -huh. I met her too, I don't remember her last okay. name. Okay, so <laughs> he introduced her as a prospective uh, co or down the road takeover, okay. uh, which Chris has been looking for for a long time. Yeah. She doesn't want any stipend. Okay. She wants that money put toward encouraging better, um, more interesting things happening on Green Up Day. Oh. Again. Uh, oh. Right now, we already budget in the highway budget. We have $600 a year in Green Up. We haven't had to use any of it. Neither have we been using the um, Central Vermont Solid Waste Management's annual grants because Cassell is taking all our stuff for free now, okay. right. which they hadn't been until 2019 or whenever they started this. Does that include tires? Too? It includes tires yeah. too. Nice. Uh, it, not asking why, because it doesn't seem like it'll behoove us to change good fortune. Yeah. Uh, but that $600 can, as long as it's not needed elsewhere, can be flipped right into uh, utilization for some sort of concept that they might come up with for next year. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't have to alter the budget so much as maybe listen to what the plan might be and yeah. give your opinions on okay. it. Okay. Right. So this uh, is something for us to be thinking about in December. Well, it's also something to, we don't need to worry about adding a stipend line right. for Green Up Day. We've right. already got a line in there. Yeah, right. Bucks. Well, yeah. yeah, we have money elsewhere yes. for mm -hmm. a different purpose. Right. Yeah. Just good. repurpose so, it. Yeah. Yeah. So we can just forget we had that discussion last time and yeah. move on. That's Very good nice. because certain people weren't happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can let this pass actually. I, you know. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, so green up day is done. Mamba event use of town lands. What's Mamba? Mount Area Mountain Bike Association. Okay. <laughs> In stereo. Okay, thank you for telling me.
what I should have known already. <laughs> <laughs> probably on some of your land, aren't they? Probably. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what do we have to say about this? It's okay. Essentially, they're seeking permission to yeah. access the trails that are on East Montpelier land. There is a map. Yeah, I think I saw a map somewhere in this voluminous set of papers. Have they done this before? I think they have, haven't they? Not in this way. Oh, not in this way? Not, a, not that goes across into the center of town. There's certainly nothing we've approved. If they did it on the slide, who knows? I didn't think the trails group was ecstatic to have mountain bikers on some of those central area trails. Well, but, Rick, uh, Rick approached me as a landowner for one of the trails to ask permission, and uh, they have a rain date for it, and I was clear that I, I was glad that, I, I was not excited about having 75 buck, uh, bikes on the, the trail all on the same day, uh, but uh, he also said, I, I don't remember his exact words, but basically they'll be wa watching conditions and they don't want bikers on muddy trails chewing them up either. Uh, so uh, they will postpone it and uh, I think even if the, the second, the rain date is, is washed out, you know, they wouldn't hold it. So, you know, it, it gave me a sense that they were approaching this responsibility from a uh, point of view of taking care of the land that they'd be using it on. So, do we have authority to approve this race on on the trails? I think we do. On, on the trails that are on East Montpelier land is yeah. what he's specifically right. seeking with this. Any trails that are on any other owners, he's going to those landowners to seek their permission. So it's only East Montpelier so that we own. specifically from us. So that we own. The town forest. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And the Baird property. And the Baird property goes across there too. Yeah. Yep. I don't see a problem. I don't either. Go for it. <laughs> if it works, it'll be a really great community event. Yeah. 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 Be, be fun. fun. Is that your motion, Amy? <laughs> Amy, you make a motion? <laughs> I'll do it if you want that. Okay, good. I did. <laughs> Woo! So we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we're done with that. And so Mamba is done. Okay, next item discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. What do we have to say about that? Boy, we got a lot of spread of COVID. Yeah. Got us to stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for staying home. I think in general, it's pretty consistent to what it's been. Um, we're still high. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As it relates to the office, um, you know, just like I mentioned at the last meeting, people are putting on masks as needed to interact with the public, but overall, there's no great concern with yeah. leaving things as they are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Last time I checked, Washington County was over nine times higher than the CDC threshold for high community transmission. Okay. It was a hundred cases per hundred thousand. They, they say don't use that anymore. Use our community level thing that has to do with beds in the hospital that are yeah. available. Yeah, to. they're changing the reporting, right. essentially. Right, but because if you look at their, their original community transmission guidelines, then high starts at 100 cases per week per 100,000 people. And uh, Washington County was at 900 something. New England, I think as a whole in the Northeast is, is getting hit pretty hard compared to the rest of the country right it now. It is, yeah. It seems like yeah. it's, it's been going back and forth. Now, when we're through with this, or when it starts to settle down, then the Midwest will be getting hit, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. It seems like it has to keep running through the population, each variant. Yeah. Is what I've noticed. Yeah. So what they're saying is we might expect to see this for, you know, for many years, like once or, you know, people catching it once or twice a year. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a cold. I mean, what I had, I mean, obviously other people have it differently, but. I just had a, I had a runny nose and a little bit of a headache for a couple of days. Mm. Yeah. Huh. But it's different than the old 
original COVID. If you're vaccinated, it's different, I think. Yeah. If you're not vaccinated, I think this would really be bad. I've seen quite a few people who have talked to me about having it, and some people have gotten quite ill even vaccinated. But they have so many different weapons for it now. I know, it's a lot different. It's a lot more treatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's still the uh, level of people in the hospital has gone up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't look like we're going to make a change. So I say we go to the next item just so we don't bore everybody to death and spend all night here. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so going on to the appointments, uh, CVRPC lead rep, Spencer Hardy, TAC rep, Frank Pratt. We're good with both those. The Spencer Hardy one is they've been, they, as in the planning commission, has been trying to convince him to do it, take it on. He's yeah. agreed to it. Yeah. Uh, yay. He's yay. a member on the planning commission. Yeah. And he's willing to spread his wings. That's, Good. That's so excellent. Thank Frank, God. Frank is not a member Frank, of anything. When's the last time Frank had assistance with that? Had. Had someone working with him on that. Oh, uh, this is yeah, different. Oh, Spencer's taking okay. over for yeah. Okay. Sorry. For yeah, no, Julie. Spencer's taking okay. over Julie's position. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And so, Rep. Pat, so that's, that's a different deal. Yes. Yeah. So that's great that Spencer is taking over Julie's position there. Right? Yeah, because we didn't have anybody. Right. Because Clarice was going to do it. She was the rep. Right. She was right. the alternate, but she didn't really want to do it. Yeah. yeah. She's probably busy. But right. anyway. Okay. But uh, didn't we have the option of having an alternate TAC rep too? Or, or we do we? have the option. Yeah. Okay. But we don't have one. We're happy to have. Frank at all. Frank. He, he just got back and yeah. called me and said he's ready to keep on trucking. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. good. So then the CV Fiber alternate rep is Marshall Cottrell. Cottrell? I don't know who that is. Have you met him? I haven't. Okay. I, he may be uh, one of the people that bought um, Fred Sating's house, the one up here at the top of Quaker. Okay. Oh, on the uh, corner there? Yeah. The, yeah. the nice one. Yeah. Um, the one on the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Big wrapper on porch. I have, I mean, Tom Fisher sent an email. Yeah. Uh, saying he met with him and mm -hmm. yeah. he's gone to some of the meetings and everybody's excited to have him. Oh, okay. nice. Um, I haven't talked with him yet. Perfect. So he may still say no after I offer the slot or after Gina <laughs> offers the slot. Uh, but at this point. Right. Yeah. But Tom, Tom submitted his name to yes. be nominated? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Tom's in, and this is his backup. Uh, funding request study committee, are the same members, or what do we have? All but one. Sue Racanelli is stepping down. So that drops you to five, which is the number you used to have all the time, but we had upped it to seven. Then we lost one last year, and now we've lost the second one. Mm -hmm. and you can go with five, or we can reach out and try to find one. I'm fine with five. Is the committee fine with five? The veteran committee, they're fine with yeah. five. Yeah. They know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like so, it would be less cumbersome with five, but then I don't know how much work. I mean, I know it's a lot of work, so maybe that's not true, but. It's probably less cumbersome with five. It always is. With less people in the room, the things move along quicker. So. Well, whatever. I think five is enough. But if they don't feel it is, then we'd have to find somebody else. But they do feel it's okay. So. Um, can we just do these with one motion, or? Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's what I was thinking. I move this late. Yep. We need a second. No. Nope. Oh, Amy's gonna do second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, we have warrants. I guess there's only two of us here, though. Well, we can oh, they, authorize you to come in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have warrants. We need a motion to authorize me to review and sign. Everyone can review, obviously, mm -hmm. but there's only two of us in here tonight. So we need a motion to approve me to sign the warrants. So we'll, sorry. Go oh, ahead. John. No, John Amy, Amy motion. beat me to it. <laughs> oh, did Amy make the motion? Yeah. Okay. Amy made the motion. I'll second it. And John second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. 
So all that's left now, is I'll, I'll do those in a second, is we've already done the other business. It is a personnel matter. And, well, actually, it, do we have a personnel matter? We have, um, we do, and we also have, I don't know, Bruce, is there anything in the town administrator report that you've written in the annotated agenda that you, or Gina, maybe? I'm not sure who, who I should be addressing here that you want to um, present to orally? Um, well, we can present that the uh, second installment for the taxes, which we touched on with Don, due by midnight tonight. Um, Current status is, uh, from a delinquent perspective, we have 41857 outstanding from the first installment and $192,075 from the second. But these are preliminary numbers and could change. Um, we did receive notice, I think this today, or perhaps over the weekend, that we were awarded a grant, of a VT tra or VTRANS Better Roads grant for the culvert replacement on Cherry Tree Hill Road, the $60,000 state funds grant with a $15,000 town match. So Bruce will be teaching me what we need to do for that. Mm -hmm. And then the upcoming meeting schedule for June is June 6th um, and June 20th. The 20th will now be include two hearings as well. Okay. So that grant update, this is the last of the Doug Newton mm -hmm. uh, designs. Okay. Uh, and this is one the Guthrie is going to do, it won't be a contractor one. Guthrie is going to install the culvert? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we would buy it. Yeah, right. Um, but but yeah. he believes that that's... <laughs> okay. That's he thinks he's got a lot. Yeah, he, he thinks he has it in to get the culvert. So. Okay. He's trying to buy two right now because we've got one on County Road that needs to be replaced yesterday. Uh, he's going to try to get a deal. Yeah. Needs to be replaced yesterday. Yeah, we now have a culvert with some steel plates over the top of it. With a, if you go out there, you'll see a another one of Seth's speed bumps. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I love speed bumps. Yeah. Okay. It's on the. It's actually pretty smooth. Side. Yeah. It's actually pretty smooth though, to be honest uh -huh. with you. Okay. That steel was expensive too. <laughs> yes, it was. Twenty-five hundred bucks. Wow. Well, we can probably reuse it. I doubt it. I could, but. <laughs> I'm a farmer. It's different. <laughs> now these are going to be fifteen thousand dollar culverts. Now, yeah, it's they're not cheap. How expensive they are. Uh, okay. Yeah, this uh, stuff's gone nuts. Yeah. What was the towing service? I can look it up. But. That was yeah, <laughs> uh, a ten thousand dollar repair to the um, six wheeler. Uh, oh, it's just put in his towing service. That's how Denise oh, wrote it. Flagged it because there's nine million. If you look at the bill. Oh yeah. It, oh, I know. What, I know. I got done to it. it. It's got it, no, I looked at the same thing. It said ninety-five hundred dollars for, for towing. towing? <laughs> it wasn't. No, okay. it's the whole repair <laughs> bill. Okay. Huh, I might put it in differently, but whatever. Okay. Um. So. The, the zoning administrator report too. Oh, this is only administrator report. Yeah. Yep. yeah Eight new applications. We've been waiting for the. The uh, select board subdivision addition, but it hasn't been added in. And he's not talking. The addition? <laughs> <laughs> what addition? Uh, John's the uh, he's a holdout on, on whether his application is going to be coming in by Wednesday or not. Oh, does, well, he, does he know it has to be? He's requiring a survey, so it's not going to come in, I wouldn't think. Okay. Uh, so we probably will have, we've got two applications already that are in for the next DRB meeting. Um, John was the, the one possible third one. Yeah, okay. Uh, so he's being held off. Okay. And then I think on the personnel matters, we determined that most of them we could take in no concession. That's what I was thinking too. Right. right. Yes. Which is why but, I asked. But not all. Yeah. Well, we could pick off the ones that we can do without the exactly. yeah. So, um, the we could talk about the meeting minutes, take a position. So, from the front porch forum post, I do have one person that yeah. has applied. My question for the board is, how do you want to proceed with this candidate? Like, do we want to just, I can one, forward you mm -hmm. the email she sent 
Yeah. She sent me, and I asked for a writing sample, which was included. Um, I can send that to you. I don't know how involved we want the process. Do we want to just have the person come to the next meeting, and do we want to kind of try this? That's kind of a good way. Okay. <laughs> well, but I, no, that's just me, because yeah. I'm, I'm not as... Um, no, Particular? Okay. No, I, I wasn't going to say that because that has negative connotations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as um, concerned what one has to do with you. Like, yeah. you can go after so I, 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 I am grateful for anybody that could come in and do minutes. <laughs> Absolutely, because it is a tough position to fill. Tough. But um, I'm really glad that we got somebody to apply. I, I wasn't sure that was going to happen, so that's wonderful. And yeah, she should come to the next meeting and do a dry run. A dry run. Yeah. I was going to say dress rehearsal, yeah, but yeah, that's I, say that too, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best way to evaluate them. I don't know. I think we talk to them, yeah. they're not really getting a feel for no. yeah. what proof, they're going to bring. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah. As they okay, say. then I will reach out to her and. Is she, her. Does she have experience or are you allowed to ask that? She does have. Oh, yeah. No, she does. That's, oh, she really? sent me a sample of some minutes that she had taken for a oh, great. meeting. Oh, good. So. But, yeah. but we have some people on the board that are more particular than others, so this would be great. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll send you all the sample. Okay. And then you all can let me know if you approve. I, I approve. This person. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> one, one. Hey, you know what it's called? Warm body syndrome. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, I wanted to start with Front Porch Forum because as much as we could take ads out for this, I just don't know. I feel like someone in the community. Yeah, of course. Is Right. You know, and she is. She's yeah. a, a member Perfect. of the East Montpelier community. Perfect. Uh, right. You know, responded to the my my yes. approach of you want to get yeah. involved. Yeah, right. And this That's and this is all about good government and transparency in government. Uh, our minutes do a really good job right now of reflecting what we're doing, what the background is, our basis for making decisions, and uh, well, it may be a challenge to find somebody who is uh, capable of explaining things clearly and and in that level of detail. Uh, but uh, you know, with when I was taking minutes, uh, when Bruce was producing the annotated agendas, that already went a long way towards that transparency. And much of what I was able to do was to copy and paste and make certain adjustments in, in uh, those. And I'm sure you'll be doing the same thing, Gina, or have already started doing the same thing. So to, uh, to have someone who's experienced in taking minutes and can do a good job on it is, is important to the uh, accountability of this board to the voters of this town. And one other item related to the uh, meeting minutes takers, we currently do have a meeting minutes taker for our planning commission and DRB boards mm -hmm. who is being paid at a rate lower than yeah. what we are bringing in. So I would like the board to approve an increase. But she's leaving, right? She she's is, leaving. but at least for her yeah. remaining meetings to match what we are bringing someone I think is, is fair. fair enough. Yeah. Um, so what do we, what do we have? $20 an hour. We right? have 20 and I've, I've I believe it's, she's currently at 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's yeah. fair to make that equitable since we've decided that $20 at the last right. meeting is an appropriate and is she, amount to pay. Is she with us for just another month? I think or? through the end of June, yeah. correct? End of June. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion on that? Yes. I'll make a motion that we pay the current uh, minute taker position at the rate of pay that we provided for uh, the new hires. I, I, if you uh, say the outgoing minute taker, uh, then I'll, I'll talk at that. Is that okay? Yeah, I was saying the current one, but the out, the current outgoing one. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. And, and this this person that you've been in contact with is willing to take minutes for all three? Okay. Yes, I will confirm that with her. Okay. I have not gotten into any further details with her yeah. until I knew how we were going to proceed, but okay. I will confirm all of that. Okay, excellent. So the first minutes that she would take would be a select board meeting or? Probably start with the select board. Because yeah. that's the toughest one. Yeah. The rest of the people are more like myself. But there are members of the select board that are, are the over The rest of the people have fewer <laughs> topics to shift around on. Oh, okay. There are so there's members some more? of both boards who are just as... Um, Concerned about the accuracy. Oh, yeah. As some members of this board. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, point well taken. Thank you. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> uh, okay. That sounds good. Yeah, you want to finish the motion? Oh, yeah. All those in favor, please no. say no. <laughs> no. John no we, had a a second. <laughs> we had a second. We had a second. Yeah, we had a second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So? So that'll do it.
All those in favor, please say aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Okay. I'm going to miss this. <laughs> you can watch it on video. So okay. just for Not your own fun. edification, Guthrie is here. Yeah. You might want to find out why. Yeah, hi, Guthrie. <laughs> he, you're so, unmuted. Take yourself off mute. Off mute. There we go. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know if the 820 part was any interest to me. The what? Access permit? We approved it. Oh, perfect. We approved with, it with, with conditional with... on your um, approval. No, because you hadn't formally submitted the application. We just yep. approved it pending your approval or disapproval. But the road thing is a long discussion that we're going to have to make. As Bruce pointed out, we have improved class four roads. That's the precedent. Um, I thought we always went by state statute, but we have not. So it's a complicated issue. We're going to have to thrash it out some more. Yep. So, but the curb cuts approved. There's no, re no reason not to approve that. Okay. I'll leave you to your business. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks you for, for tuning in. in. Yes. Yeah. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So. So the next for zoning administrator, um, we received an applicant today yes. for that position. Mm -hmm. So um, I assume we want to proceed with. Yep. Setting up interviews. Yeah. So we could figure out who's going to be part of that interview team. Well. So. This would be your. Your normal methodology at this point would be to say, let's wait for the Planning Commission to tell us how their review of the applicants went. Well, they haven't even reviewed it, so. No, they don't know about okay. it. Right. OK. Uh, Thank you for so that reminder. We'll, we'll just wait. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, they would do the initial interview, would yeah. they not? They would if that's how you want it handled. Well, I think that's what we One way or that. another, they have to do the recommendation right. Right. so you can yeah. interview and send them to them and have them interview and send them back to you right. no i don't i think they should <laughs> they should do it. they they should do what they think's best yeah yeah and we'll just follow okay yeah and then i just wanted to ensure the board knew, knew that michelle started last week she is doing a great job and we get along quite well so good good we are both very pleased <laughs> Nice. With the with the hires. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Um, so that's really all the personnel matters, is it not? Or is there There's any... one more that I would want to take to executive session. Okay. All right. All right. And I think we're going to go to executive session. We are. So right. we have a contract so, thing to talk about. I will make a motion if if we're ready for that. Yep. Uh, so, which one are you going to do? Uh, I thought I would make a motion to do concurrent executive session for different reasons. Is that a legit way to do Just it? Just remember you? the first one is. Um, requires that double. Whereas the finding? The second one is just a s simple one. Uh, so the, the first one, you mean the fire department one? Yes. Okay. Um, that's a good point. So we can make the finding first. Um, so do you have language in here for the finding? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm looking for it. Yeah, it's in the middle of the second page. Of the report. Right. Thank you. So, um, All right. I, I move that the board find that the discussion of the agenda item on the notice of non renewal for an East Mont, a potential issuance of a notice of non renewal for the East Montpelier Fire Department service agreement, um, premature general public knowledge of this would clearly place the public body at a substantial disadvantage. So we're going to make that finding. We're going to make that finding. Right. If we get a second and approve it. Do we have a second that we made the finding? <clears throat> Amy, a second. All those in favor of saying yes to the finding, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. So the second motion then is a double motion. It's to enter a double barreled executive session uh, for the uh, purpose of um, discussing 
the potential issue of notice of non-renewal for the East Montpelier Fire Department service agreement and to discuss a potential uh, a personnel matter and that would be under a separate uh, provision of Vermont statutes which is will be listed in the motion so you make that motion do we have a second yeah John all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. okay all right um, we're coming out of executive session um, no action taken Anything else? What time do we come out? It is nine, well, 905, 906, 905. 905. We came out of executive session. There's no action taken. Um, I think we're all set. I think John has a motion. Oh, John, did you have a motion? Amy? I, Amy does. Oh, yeah. Oh. I move that we adjourn. I'll second that. Oh, that's the first time you said something, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.